Movie Making with Renelle Golden is brought to you by Samira Entertainment, supporting indie films and the filmmakers who create them. Stop by their website to learn more, www.samiraentertainment.com. That's www.samiraentertainment.com. Hello, everybody. I am here with Ariana Gorley. She is a teen writer, producer, director, and actor. The sky is the limit for her. How are you doing today? I'm doing awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad you came to talk to us. I love talking to people that figure out what they want early in life and they just go for it. And that seems to be what you are doing. So tell me a little bit about how you got into the film industry, the entertainment field. So I've grown up a competitive dancer and the performing arts center that I go to does a lot of theater stuff. And I kind of wanted to follow in the footsteps of the older girls. And then I learned that I should try film acting if I'm going to try theater acting. And that kind of got me into the film industry more. And then I reached a rough spot. This happens to a lot of people when they're at like ages like 12 to 14, because at that point where they're kind of a teenager, but not yet. Right, right. Kids anymore, but sometimes they can and adults can play teenagers and it's at like a rough patch right hard to get casted you're in that yeah. gray area yeah and my agent was like you should try just like for fun making a film with your friends just to see what it's like to cast people and characters and understand yeah. like that you're a small piece of the puzzle and it's not about you not being good enough or anything like that but there's so many factors right I took that and I really ran with it and that's when I produced my first short film which was called My Dance Teacher's a Vampire. And that was- I love that. I love that. Was that a funny one? Yeah, it was. um, I worked with a director and a writer. And actually it was semi-unintentional at first to produce it because we were working on it literally on set. And he was like, you are producing this. So like you should have a a production company name or something to attack. (laughs) Oh, that's cool. It's like, oh, yeah, okay. And after doing that, I kind of hit the ground running because then I started, people had interest in me making films for them after watching mine. And yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. The name of your company is really cool. I was just like, that is so neat. Is that with Grace Productions? Does some of that come from your name? Yeah. My middle name is Grace. I love it. Okay. Part of it was just very cool. I like the sound of grace. Yes. Uh, Well, and grace is an amazing thing in life. We should all have it. Um, And you've got it multiple of ways now. (laughs) Your name, your company, and hopefully you are full of grace. I love it. Okay. So you you did this dance teacher as a vampire and and you went on to do more. Um, Did you know right away that, oh my gosh, this is something I really want to do, like do for my life? Uh, It was definitely interesting, I would say, because working on the first one, I was in it, and I had less of a part in the creation of the story, but by it made me want to create stories myself, because I always like to think that I like to dance and be a storyteller when I dance and, like, create something more than just the dance. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So writing myself, like writing. I was going to ask you that. Okay, that was my question. So then you went on to, you started writing. So what was the first thing you wrote? The first thing I wrote was called A Dance for Cinderella. I didn't direct that one. I wrote it and produced it. And I was a part of it at the time. Like I was in it. Right. Uh, And that one was really cool because it was the first time I dabbled with creating a story. And it was really interesting to not just write a story in my journal and read it to myself. I had actually put thought into every movement that someone made and then seeing how someone else can interpret it when having someone else direct it. Oh, wow. In that film were people, did they have dialogue as well as movement, dance type movement? So that one they had, there was dance portions and then there was also dialogue. It was, I would say, pretty limited but there was still like aspects of dialogue which was 
my favorite and least favorite part when I read books, my favorite part is the dialogue. I find that the most interesting. Yes. So writing dialogue, I was like, okay, I have to make this like good. Meaningful because- or something, right? <laughs> I love that. I love yeah. that. Okay. And then you have done quite a few and there's some things that are very special about you and hopefully they're good to talk about. You tell me if not, but you work with a purpose from what I'm reading. So something like bringing awareness to mental health, ADHD, a word that's very big in my household, uh, neurodivergence. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that and what that means in your work. So I like to bring personal journeys to my writing as much as possible. I find it gives me a better connection to what I'm writing and it's not just something random, especially because I do fairy tale retellings yes. most. So adding a personal journey to it makes it more of a connection to me. And it also makes it more relevant to people now. Because yes. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. Definitely. I grew up watching Cinderella and like all these fairy tales and I liked them. But as I get older, I realize how easy it is to learn lessons through different kinds of stories, TV, movies, books, how easy it is to input lessons into writing. Yeah. And mm. I really wanted to do that in a way that it was still accessible for younger and older. Wow. When you um, go and you produce these things and you're casting, like what's one of the, I guess what I'm asking is what is one of the hardest aspects of doing that because I imagine you're you're casting and you're actually casting among your peers. Yeah. And I find even now as at my age, I'm a mom of two and you know I'm an older filmmaker, but casting's really hard because sometimes we have to make those tough decisions and it's all about who's best for the role. And I just I have a really hard time when people I know audition for me. How does that work for you? So that is very interesting to work with, especially at my age. Yes. (laughs) Oh, so delicately. (laughs) My third short film is called uh, Sarah Snow and the Seven Dancers. My like focus, aside from the story, when filming was to include as many people as possible. Oh, very cool. Growing up dancing and acting it's really hard to find opportunities, especially as a kid. And especially if you don't live necessarily right in Toronto, where you're like surrounded by the industry. Right. So I had an open call for that, which was the first time I did that. Oh, wow. It was really interesting because I got people that I knew, people that I had never met before, people I had only seen through Instagram, people that I knew that I never thought would be interested in doing something like that. So I asked them in the past because I just didn't see them as the kind of people that would want to do that. And I was like pleasantly surprised. Yeah. And that was difficult because I wanted a big group dance number at the end of the film. Oh, wow. Because I give as many kids an opportunity to know what it's like to be on some form of a set. I love and- that learn choreography with lots of other people and do something different and something out of their comfort zone. So I had Sarah Snow, I had three antagonists, and then I had the seven dancers, which was in replace of They're Snow cool. White. The- yeah, yeah, that's cool. I had so many talented dancers a part of that project that just blew my mind. And casting those seven dancers out of the like so many people that had audition was so difficult, especially when some of the people I knew personally, some of the people I had no idea who they were and that can help or make it harder because if I know someone, I know, okay, they're going to be easy to work with on set or they're not going to be easy to work with on set and random people. I'm like, obviously I want to give them just as equal of a chance, but I don't know how they would take direction, things like that. So that was interesting because I really got to experience the casting process Oh, wow. But it, yes. <laughs> com- like conflicts with like, why, oh, oh, you know, yeah. first time. And <laughs> did you direct that. that too? Was that one that you directed? That was the first time I directed something. Oh, wow. Wow. How did you feel? Were you also in it or did you strictly direct it? 
So at that point, I was no longer in my own short films. And I kind of have two reasons for that. One is I have a really hard time watching myself. Oh. <laughs> so I didn't want to not watch my own short films because I didn't like right. looking at them and thinking I look weird. And oh. also in between A Dance with Cinderella and Sarah Snow, I actually became an actor member oh. and can't be in my own short films anymore because they're non-union and I have looked okay I've looked into having union short films and then I can but the whole reason I love filmmaking is because I can include people who don't have opportunities very easily and if it was union that would shrink that even more. Right, right. And so you're opening up the world to lots of people to possibly realize their dream or what they want to do, but you are also realizing yours. Have you determined what you love the most or do you, you know, like on camera, off camera, do you have a favorite thing that you like to do when it comes to filmmaking? It's really hard for me (laughs) to know because they're like, two different kinds of love. One of them, it's like how you love your kid versus how you love your partner. Good point. So like filmmaking, my films are like something I created. It's like my, it's like my child, even like though it's... Baby, like, yeah. <laughs> when I am acting or dancing or doing stuff in front of the camera or on stage, it feels like I'm working alongside the story and alongside the art. Oh, neat. Okay. That's a good way to look at it. I've never thought of it like that. I like that. It's very cool. What is something that you would tell people, especially people in your age group, young people that are just finding out that this is a passion of theirs and they're going, should I do it? Should I do it? What do I do? What what advice would you give them? I would say just to try things, whatever in whatever form you do, because you have no idea if you are going to, if something is going to be for you or not, and you don't want to put your whole life on the line of something you haven't even tried. (laughs) So, (laughs) and it doesn't have to necessarily be, you start a production company and you start sending out open calls. You can be collaborating with your friends. You can be working with your family. I met someone at a film festival recently. Her name is Tate. She makes films as well. She's my age, which was really cool. I haven't met someone my age who makes films. So that was a nice way to connect. And she films everything herself. She directs it. She writes it. She produces it. She edits it. She does everything. Oh, that, that's and lots of work. Wow. Everything on camera. She like, just because she tried and she cared about it and she was passionate about it. You oh. don't have a cameraman and a full crew to do that. I personally am not so good with the technical stuff. And I'm fortunate to have people in my community that I can collaborate with. Yeah. But really just when my agent said, oh, you should try just making a film. Her expectations was me to film something on my phone and, you know, edit it on iMovie with my friends. And that is, that is filmmaking. Too, but- <laughs> just, yeah, just because it's not working with tons of people and using all this different equipment, it's still a form of self, like storytelling that is mm-hmm. equal so I definitely say just try the things that you are interested in. Don't wait around because I found I growing up was fairly shy, especially in like busy social interactions. And recently I've been going to a lot of big group things. So I went to a film festival for my most recent film. And the whole time I was like, okay, I want to go and talk to this person. Their film was really good. I want to talk to them about it. I want to learn from them because uh-huh. I was surrounded adult filmmakers and I'm saying all these things to myself and I'm like I know that tomorrow I am going to regret not talking to them oh wow so you pushed yourself outside of the comfort zone to start doing that yeah that's and that admirable really, that's cool <laughs> oh, it really wow. helped create connections with people all around the world so I went to a film festival called dances with films yes it's in Los Angeles right and it was for my film the tea party they had there was eight films that were created by kids and the rest were adults. And this was like a week long film festival. There was tons of people there. I was there on the opening night 
And I talked to people from New Zealand who make children's films. I was talking to people from LA who make feature films. I was talking to people from Hawaii who make underwater films. Like, Oh, wow. There are so many connections that I made and so many things that I learned that I wouldn't have if I didn't just put myself out there. And that's coming from someone who is very scared of putting themselves out there. I I totally understand that. But oh my gosh, these connections you're making now are only going to empower you as the years pass and you stay in touch with these people or, you know, they may remember you. So one day they might be in your film or you might be in their film. It's I'm really impressed that you're out there doing that. That's very cool. In the process of becoming a filmmaker, have you, this is just a goofy question, but have you like cast your family in your films or dragged them into it? (laughs) Not done that yet. (laughs) My still working on it. (laughs) So uh, I'm an only child. Ah, gotcha. 100% be dragged into every single film, but my parents support a lot behind the camera. So I'm not going to push too hard for them to be in front of me. I love it, though. That's so awesome. Um, Yeah. What is your current film that you have out there? So my most recent film is called The Tea Party. It's currently going through, like, the film festival circuit, so it'll be released publicly in a couple months. Oh, very cool. Yeah, it's about... It's a Alice in Wonderland retelling showing my perspective of growing up with ADHD and actually something interesting about having a film about ADHD is when I started filmmaking, I was only just starting the diagnosis process. Gotcha. And that takes a long time. That's not instantaneous. Yeah. So that was part of the motivation I had for it is because especially with girls, a lot of people go undiagnosed or they get diagnosed very late. So I wasn't diagnosed with ADHD until I was about 14. Okay. I think knowing that earlier on in my life would have helped me with learning and just living in general. Right. So I really raise awareness about it from a female perspective, but also from a perspective of someone who's still learning about themselves because I didn't want to portray ADHD in the wrong way. So I really pushed that it's, it's from my knowledge of it. It's from my experience of it. I showed my symptoms through the characters, not every. That. Yeah, that that is very cool, and it's nice that you can use your your film making, whether you're writing or producing it, to help spread awareness about any cause. Really, it's it's a gift to be able to make a film and have meaning behind it, as much as it's entertaining. Yeah. I love that. So what do you have a, a film on the horizon? Something you're working on now? Your next one? I'm hoping to continue Alice's journey. Oh. First film focused on her having difficulty when hosting a party for her friends and how it was a struggle. And I would really like to continue her journey seeing all of the positive attributes ADHD brings to the table. I so cool. I love that. It's definitely in its first stages. I wrote it recently. I actually wrote it unexpectedly. I have a writing class at my high school and we were doing children's literature and I had to make an audio book. And I was like, oh, why don't I just write oh. it about this and I can just continue oh, right that's now. Oh, so cool. Yeah. So I have to adapt it, obviously. Right, to be right. Do you see yourself continuing to grow and do you see filmmaking as a lasting journey in your life as something you'll always be involved in? I think I'll definitely be involved in it in some way, shape or form. I don't know if that's necessarily being a director forever. Obviously, like people like Greta Gerwig are huge inspirations to becoming one Uh, and telling stories like that. But I think my goal in the end would be to help younger generations start doing the things they love so I would love to work with like a a streaming service like Netflix or something of creating a youth foundation where they find young filmmakers and collaborate with them and help tell their stories oh that's very very cool give them the opportunities that I had because if I didn't have the family that I had and the friends that I had and I didn't have the connections this would have been incredibly difficult. It's already difficult getting a budget for all of this. I've done lots of different ways to raise money throughout this process. Right. So I just 
want to be able to help people in the future do the same things that I was able to do. I love that. That is just so, so cool. If people want to find you, if they want to find out about your films, what's some of the best ways for them to do that? So the best way to probably find more information about me would be through my personal, well, My Instagram is Ariana underscore Grace underscore Gourley or with Grace Productions on Instagram. And then I do have a website that is in the works right now. And that's withgraceproductions.com. Very cool. With Grace Productions. I love that name so much, so much. Is there any last things that you would like to maybe share before we do our fun questions with anybody? Oh, I'd probably just say that If you are someone who is struggling with understanding yourself or understanding the way your brain works, writing does help that a lot. I started writing The Tea Party last summer and it was very, it was difficult for me because I wanted to make sure I portrayed it properly because it was so personal to me and it really helped understand because I did do research a uh, lots and lots of research about ADHD right uh, and that did help me find clarity in myself and I found that in other forms of writing too if I'm doing poetry for school or if I'm just writing for fun that right. it does help connect with yourself so it's always an avenue to try because I know that writing isn't for everybody reading isn't for everyone yoga isn't for everyone things that bring peace of mind There are lots of different kinds and I didn't realize that writing could be such a good avenue for that. Yeah. I love that you found it though. And and you are one inspirational young lady. It just, um, you blow my mind. Your resume is is already powerful and you're only, you know, just a little bit way into your journey. (laughs) Super cool. Well, if you're ready, I am going to ask you five goofy questions. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. All right. The first question, what's your favorite food? My favorite food is definitely microwave popcorn. (laughs) That's probably what my son or daughter would say. I love that. Okay. What is something that inspires you or motivates you? I think film related. Right. Definitely (laughs) watching other people's journeys and learning about different people's lives and what they've overcome to get where they are. It helps me see that I can get, I can achieve my goals no matter what. Gets Anything's in the way. possible. I love that. That's a brilliant answer. Okay. Next question. What is something that you've always dreamed of doing, but you haven't done yet that isn't film related? Desperately want to go to Greece. I'm a huge Mamma Mia fan and ABBA fan. Oh and- yeah. That's cool. To be on like the cliffs with all the white, buildings behind you and the ocean roaring out front. I would love that. Yeah. I I used to dream maybe I could get married that way. I'm a little late on that. (laughs) Um, What is your favorite song to sing at the top of your lungs when you're riding in a car? I go through so many different songs right (laughs) now. (laughs) It would probably be our last summer by ABBA. Oh, that's cool. You like all the classics. That's so <laughs> awesome. Oh, I love that. Okay, last question. What is your favorite movie? Oh, Mamma Mia, easy. <laughs> Mamma Mia. Here we go again. Yeah. I was thinking it's going to be uh, Mamma Mia because of the ABBA. <laughs> That's so awesome. Well, I have loved talking to you. Please just let me know anytime you want to come back or you have another film or something that you want to talk about. I'd love to have you back. And it was really great to have you on today. It's amazing to talk to you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Today's show is sponsored by Jim Kitty helping women on their health and wellness journey by providing high quality, organically sourced vitamins and supplements. Visit them today at www.jimkitty.net. You've been listening to Movie Making with Rennell Golden. Be sure to come back for our next episode where we bring you the people who make movies you love. Got a topic about filmmaking you want to hear on our podcast? Send us an email at moviemakingpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. This podcast has been sponsored by Samara Entertainment.